Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to, to study your word. Father God, we lift up Beagle Region right now. We ask for protection. We ask for the, if, if, if people are, are missing, if people are hurt, that you would provide the care that's needed, even supernaturally. Father, we pray that life would be spared. We ask that this typhoon would not cause any more damage and that you would bring it out of the Philippines. Father, I pray that you would weaken it and cause it to, and bring it to an end so that it would not damage other places in Southeast Asia. We also pray that you would use these difficult times. We know that a difficult time is meant to turn hearts and eyes to you, Father, and that we are to, to contemplate and re to repent of our sins. So, Father God, I pray that you would use this to further your gospel and that we would trust in you, those who are in this uh, path of destruction, that you would um, use it for your glory. Father, we also pray that you would reveal to us how we can help our brothers and sisters that are suffering in vehicle right now. In Jesus, name, Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. We're, we're looking at Romans 1, 16 and 17. We'll review this on Tuesday night, but I'll just work through this. If you brought your, when you practiced on it, if you brought that, we can also discuss it. Um, but I'll just work if I was preaching this text, I'll just work through what I, I looked, how I worked through it to really, um, um, to, to look at the structure. So I'll just, I'll just show you the way I do it and then you can use it. And um, I hope it'll be a help to you. What I'll do is after I'm done with this, I'm going to screenshot it and then maybe I'll share it. I'll share it on our page so that we can see it. So just, just by way of introduction, what I always do is when, I, when I'm looking at the structure, the, the biggest things I always look at first are, I always do this. I just immediately identify the, I immediately identify the, the punctuation in the capital O's. That, that immediately will tell me most likely how many major points I'll have. And then from there I can create sub, sub points. So I always, if whenever you come to a passage, it looks very hard and intimidating. That's the first thing. Just immediately identify the punctuation, identify the capitalization. And then what you want to do is that's pretty easy for all of us to do. And then, so what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll, I'll then break this out immediately so that it's separate now. So I'll, I'll separate that out. So right now I've separated out. Now we, now we know that, we're working with two sentences. So let me just erase this because so everyone can see that, right? So that, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So we have two sentences that we're working with. And so we can, we can create, most likely we have our, our we can identify our, our major, um, our major points. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is, uh, now you don't have to do this because, I mean, this is beyond the scope of the class, okay? But, but since this is a workshop and I'm working through it, the next thing I'll do is I'm going, to, I'm going to identify all the different verbs because each verb is gonna tell me that there's a, a thought around that verb. So I'm not gonna look at subjects, I'm not gonna look at actors, I'm not gonna look at objects, I'm gonna look at the verbs. That's the next thing. So here I see one verb there, I see a verb here. Um, yeah, so I see I see three verbs there. Then down here I see one, two, three. So I have I have I have six different verbs. So I'm probably gonna have six different points or six or three and three something like that. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to identify. Uh, what is the main verb in each sentence? Because that will be my main idea, okay? So uh, uh, looking here, I can identify this is the main, this is the main verb, and this is the main verb here. 
Again, you don't have to do that for this class. That's just my thinking. So you want to look for the main verb that really identifies, um, that'll identify the main idea. Now, the reason why I didn't choose the other, the other verbs, I've, I've chosen the ones that I've chosen is because this is a, this is a, let me just do, use a smaller. This is a, this is a, a dependent conjunction. So I know that, I know that this clause here is, it's dependent to, upon this. Okay. All right. Down here, this is dependent upon this, okay? And then we know that this is also dependent because it's a quotation within the side. Now, actually, if I'm gonna be technical and consistent, let me rewrite this with the right nomenclature because I'm using a green color and really I should be using the purple. The purple is to be consistent, okay? So we have, we have here, to, to here, this is modifying this. We have this, which is modifying everyone who believes. And then we also have down here, this is related to here. And then this is just, this is really just the content. This is the content. For what is written. Danny, is it making sense for you or are you a little lost? Okay, good. All right. So it, 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 might, it might be a little more complicated, but, but, but at least my main, my main, what I want us to see is at least if it's making logical sense, it might be harder when you apply it to some other place, fair enough. But at least if you're understanding what I am doing, that, that's what I'm really focusing upon here. Okay. So, so, now that I've done that, okay, I'm just going to erase this because it's gonna get a little bit confusing when I have to block it out. I'll, I'll block it out first. Okay, so, so looking at, looking at um, this, 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 and this, I want to, I want to, we know that it's dependent upon the main verb, Okay, so we want to make it, we want to re, restructure the sentence so that it can really, it really clearly shows us what the structure looks like. Okay, does that, does that, is everyone tracking with me? So when we, people will talk about block diagramming. Okay, and so what we're going to do here with this block diagramming is, um, the main idea is going to be furthest indented here, left, at the left, and then things that are dependent will be further in. So this sentence is dependent upon this sentence, this sentence is dependent upon this. And so the point here is that, let's say for example here, you have the main idea, and then these are dependent ideas. Okay. So they're related in some fashion. And then there's a relationship that then what we want to do is we want to identify what is that sentence? What is this type of sentence? That's what we're then doing. And then we're looking at the relationship between the two. And then pretty much once you have that, your, your outline is just there. It's just so easy for you to, to create the outline to preach, okay? So let me just separate this out so that we can come back here. So that's kind of the big idea of what's going on here, okay? So, so coming back here, what I'm going to do is, I know, that, I know that this for it is the power of God. I know that this is dependent upon the main idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, 
I, I, I broke it out and then I indented it so it's dependent, okay? And then I know that the who believes, the who believes is also dependent because it's modifying everyone, okay? Um, and then coming down here, we can do the same thing as well. So let's go, I'm gonna erase this so that you can see how I can, you can see what I did here. Now let's, let's come back here and I'm going to re-highlight the verbs. One, two, three, one, two, three. In some ways, we're doing both an intra and inter analysis at one time. That's what I will typically do when I'm working it out because I don't have time to do each. If it's hard for you, you, you might want to do just one or choose, but I try to do it both because I want to see the structure, okay? How are we going to, what is the relationships here, okay? So, so I'm looking at this connecting word here. This connecting word here, and really this phrase, because this is part of it, this phrase is modifying here. And um, did you guys determine what that relationship was? Did anyone try to determine what that relationship was? Did anyone try to identify? Aster, assertion. I mean, the really inter, inter sentence. Uh, it's a Okay, so, so not yet. So if we're looking at intersentence, if we're looking at intersentence, we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at these two, correct, Kaya? That's intersentence. So we're not there yet. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So this would, the, the question I'm asking you, Kaya, would still be within, it would still be under the intra, and we're looking at the purple categories. So, just looking though at this word, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. What type of word could we substitute here for for? Because. What? Yes, okay. So you don't have to be a grammarian to see that. What is the substitute word? What's the other word that makes logical sense that's correct? That's why I really want to emphasize um, we are making uh, decisions but they're going, it's going to make logical sense. We are logical people. As long as you understand how logic works, you don't have to use a grammar book, although that can be helpful, okay? So typically what I'll do is I'll try to substitute another word and then that tells me the relationship. So if we substitute because and it makes logical sense, then it must be. And so if we're using the word because, we can also use the, the logical idea of reason, correct? Reason, because provides a reason, okay? Or you could say, you could also say cause, okay? So this relationship here is, is a reason or a cause, okay? Um, coming here, again, if we were to go to our handout, do you want me to go just so, we, so you can see, do you want me to go to the handout or, or not necessary? Do you want me to, to, to go to the handout? The intra or the... the, the yeah, so we're, we're, we're kind of working at both. We're working at both here. Do you, do you want me to go? Let, let, let's, let's go here, let me find it. So here, this is what I'm referring to. You see this, the cause? So if you were using the, the handout, you would find this, this cause, okay? And you have, you can clearly see here, for, because, since, okay? So that's really giving you the key word that really, but of course we can do it logically. We don't, we don't have to have the handout. We can say, oh, it's, it's a cause, it's a reason, okay? Um, but the handout's to help you, okay? So coming back here, 
looking at relationships from, from for, because we're, we're moving to structure, we can say that this is, is dependent and it's giving us, it's giving us, the cause, okay? Now, logically here, again, we'll look at the handout in a second, but I want to ask the question. Logically here, what is the, what word does the who connect to? What word does the who connect to? Everyone. Yes. Jew and Greek. Everyone who believes, right? So if that's the case, let's go back to our handout now. I'm gonna go back to our handout. Um, I'm just gonna skip because you would go, go, you'd look at the different options, but I'm gonna come down here to, to uh, describing persons, places, or things. And when I look down here, I see, ah, the keyword of who, who believes. Okay, so I know it's a description, okay? So coming back to here, I'm going to mark who believes, and it's connected to here, and this is giving a description. Is everyone tracking with me? Any questions? Does that make sense? It's not. It's going to take practice, but once you familiarize yourself with the categories, it becomes easy, okay? So, so now we, we've essentially done an intra-sentence structure, but we feel very confident with how everything relates here, okay? So then looking at the big idea, so now we're, we're going to enter. So we just finished the intra, now we're going to go to the enter here, okay? So what I want to first ask is, When you go to in, in, uh, in ter, now we're looking at this, we're looking at this as one idea. Okay, now we're looking at this as one idea. Okay, and, and the way we look at to identify the, the, the main idea typically, now not always, but I'm gonna look at the main the, uh, the main verb, or you could say the main action word. Now, looking at your list, I'm using action, not in the very, I'm not using it because there's different types, okay? Now, so, so let's, so now looking at this main, this main action verb, and looking at your options in the inter, so let's go back now, let's go back now to the, to the inter sentence structure analysis, okay? So now we're at the in, we're looking at the inter sentence analysis, okay? And so you can go step by step, looking at which one would, would fit best. I'm gonna come back here, again, to, to put us in a, in a path towards clarity, I want to first ask the question logically. Number one, is, is I am not ashamed, is that an action? Is, is the word, is this word here, is this an action? Yes or no? Not ashamed, yes. Yes, Pastor. Is in a sense. Is, is being ashamed an action? So just think about it for a second. If, if, I, if I am ashamed, what is the action that I'm doing? If, 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 if what you're saying is correct, if you're saying it's an action, what is the actual action that you're doing? Or maybe it's not an action. It's not, it's, it's not. not. It's, an, it's, a, no, it's like more of a, an emotion. It's, yeah. It's, it's actually a passive um, voice. So you are, you are active, active, uh, acted upon. So coming back here, so what, what, so sorry, I, I missed something. So Sunny was saying something, Kaya was saying something. We'll just go to Kaya first. What were you saying, Kay? It was an emotion, is that what you were saying? Yes, Pastor, it's more of an emotion. So yeah, it could be, it could be an emotion perhaps. We want to, 
at least at this point we want to investigate. So what I'm doing here is what I'm, what, what I'm trying to do, everyone, is that we need, to first, we need to first identify what are the possibilities because you don't have the time just to go through each, each option. So you have to think, what are the possibilities? Okay, so it could be a motion. Um, Sonny, what were you saying? Uh, it's actually the passive voice. So um, the actor is acted upon something or described, was described or is described something. Yeah, so I'm thinking about if it's a passive voice or not because it's not using the being. If it, I, I am being ashamed would be passive. There's no, ref, there's no use of the word uh being let me just check I, I think it's a middle or yeah something like that well, okay but but okay but but, but okay and, and fair enough we, we can look at those sunny but but i guess my focus right now is um right uh, uh it's if it's not an action um because even passive can still be right so i was hit by the ball that's still even if it's passive it's still an action right so we're not, it's not in a, it's not in that action sense. So we want to identify what other possibilities it is. So it, it is definitely possible. It could be an emotion. You could, you could have so that. Is, is it the state? Yes. So the other option is state. Yes. And I think, so let, let's go first and let's look at the options here. Let's look here. Let's go to state first. Um, a state is, this, the sentence provides the state of being of a person, place, or thing. And that is connected with an emotion. So, so, so I don't want to say that Kea is wrong there. But I do think that coming back to here, this is a state, right? So, of course, us, we could be in a state of anger. We could be in a state of, of sorrow, of shock, shock. of pain. We can be in a state of shame. And that's really what, what we want to say here is that this is a state of shame, right? But it's not. <laughs> it's not a state of shame. <laughs> the opposite. So it would be, we could say state of, of pride or, or we could say confidence. So coming back here, the big takeaway is that what is, because, okay, if this, if the main idea is Paul is in a state of confidence with respect to the gospel, and then he gives the, he gives the, the reason for the state, and then he gives the description of who the gospel is for, um, really this main idea is, it comes back to, the fact that he is confident of the gospel, correct? So, so this, main, this main type of sentence, what we could say is this is a, we could just say that this is a state, a state or a state of being. I'll just leave it with, I'll just leave it with state, okay? So what is the state? And then we, you can talk about it's pertaining to the gospel, why? Who is it connected to? But the main idea here is that Paul is, is, is in a state of confidence with respect to the gospel. So let's rewrite this. This is now, I'm going to rewrite it to help me when I preach it and teach it, okay? So what we could say here is, if I'm going to rewrite this, we could say that Paul is in a... Uh, Confident. Yeah, confident state um, uh, with or with respect. I'm struggling here. Respect to the gospel. There's many ways you can say it. I'm just restating it clearly. So if you can see here, this is not repeating the passage. 
in some ways this is interpreting or bringing or expositing. Do you see what I'm saying? Now we're, we're in some ways we're, we're, we're getting close to expositing. We really haven't gone to ex exposition yet because at this point we're still, um, we're still gathering information. We're, we're, we are rewording it. Okay, but, th but this, is, this could also be a form of an observation here, okay? After we've asked the question, all right? So everyone, I hope everyone sees this. Is, is it making sense for everyone? Yes, that's wow. <laughs> so basically, uh, we, we, we have to look for, for example, if this guy, we, we encounter this kind of statement, we are, we are going to look for the you know, assumptions behind that, that text. Let's say this one is, uh, Apostle Paul is, 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 a, is, a, is in a confident. Yeah, no, and, and so this is part of the explanation, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right, so, so we're, 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 we're getting to bringing clarity to the text, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, after, Tim, uh, it was really helpful if we rewrite the uh, text in the Bible so in our own understanding. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's why they really encourage you to do a paraphrase, to write it in your own words. Exactly. Because if you can rewrite it in your own words, it's different but saying the same thing, then I, then I would say you understand what's being said. If it's hard for you to rewrite it in your own words, where it's not the exact same, then I don't think you've come to an understanding yet of it. So um, this will take practice. This is not going to be easy. This will take some practice, but I, but I hope, but, but I hope it'll you'll get better at it, okay? All right, so let's, let's, let's come down here now. Let's look at the second, let's look at the second, um, the second <laughs> sentence here, okay? So again, so now here, um, we have a, we have this word as, we have this word as, and it's connected to here as it is written. So if I come back to, if I come back to this in, intra sentence structure analysis, okay? And I'm, again, I'm gonna go back and look for the different keywords. I'm going to be looking, I'm just cheating now because I know what it is, okay? So <laughs> I'm cheating. But I'm looking for this word as, I'm thinking, oh, as or like, that's a word of comparison, it's comparing, okay? So I'm gonna go down here and ah, I have a category for comparison. And look at that, imagine that, we have the comparison word of? Or. As, or. as. So then, okay, I know it's a comparison, okay? Um, now, there is debate, um, there is debate, uh, this is going very deep, okay? This is going very deep. The, the Greek word, <laughs> the Greek word, if you study the commentaries, you look at the Greek word, this could be comparison. So what it's saying is, uh, uh, this could be comparison, this could also be cause. Because this, the Greek conjunction here, can also be used in causal, in causal context, okay? Causal, causal participle. Yeah. Well, it's not a causal, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the, I think it's kathos, kathos, the, the Greek kathos, but yeah. kathos can also be in a causal dependent relationship. So um, that's going very deep. But, but if you think about, don't be stressed. If you think about this for a second, whether it's comparison or cause, there is a close overlap, meaning to say that, that the main statement, the main statement is, is the same there 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 is a connection here okay so that you could you could say it's the same it's similar and that is in a way close to cause right if it's same or similar it's it, there is a different relation i'm not trying i'm not trying to say that it's identical but what i'm trying to say is that um whether something is a cause or it's similar there's a very close connection there. Is everyone tracking with me? So looking at the main statement, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. If we say comparison, 
uh, we're saying that this is also said in the Old Testament, right? So let's just write this down. So if we, if we choose the, the category of comparison, we are saying that um, uh, the statement is similar to what is written in the Old Testament, okay? So the righteousness of God is revealed from for faith for faith as it is written. Okay, so it's saying this is true, and it's, it was written here as well, okay? So do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's an agreement, okay? Now, if you changed it to cause, it's slightly different, but it's very close. Cause means that because it is written in the OT. So it's even stronger. <laughs> So, so, so the first is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, just like it's been written in the Old Testament. So that's good. We would say yes. Now, if now if the the the, the conjunction is really signifying cause, it's even stronger. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, because it has been written. It's even stronger. Okay. Now, now until. You're saying, okay, Tim, you're splitting hairs, you know, da, 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 da. like what's the significance? Why you're, you're, you're belaboring the point. You, you have to understand what the debate is behind the scenes to, to understand the significance, okay? So, so Paul highlights this idea of from faith for faith. And so what we need to identify as exegetes, we need to become good at this, is looking at this here. Ah, the debate is over faith versus works of law. So the Jew would say, <laughs> the righteousness of God is revealed through the works of the law. As it has been written, the one who does them will live by them. Something like that. That's what a Jew would say. And Paul's like, no, 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 no. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, sit, uh, since it has been written, as it has been written, because it has been written, the righteous shall live by faith. This is, a, this is an Old Testament quotation from Habakkuk 2.4. So what I'm trying to get at, this is actually incredibly significant. And if I'm preaching this, I want to explain to the, to the, to the audience what the problem is. You can say the Catholic, it's like, it's faith and works. <laughs> faith and works. From faith for works, right? Catholics will say, yeah, there's faith. There's faith to get in there's faith, but you also need works. That's what they say, right? So, so then everything really comes in the crystal view because now this statement, this statement is so powerful. This statement becomes so powerful if we understand this debate here, faith versus works of the law. Okay. And for our context, it's very important because Iglesia de Cristo, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, Angdatin Da'an, Seventh-day Adventist, Catholica, right? They're all saying faith plus works. Faith plus works equals salvation. Okay? Go ahead, Mark. And, and Pentecostals, there. So yeah, there you go. And Pentecostals, so it's, it's seven or eight. Eight. <laughs> eight. Good. Okay. So everyone sees what's going on here. Okay? I hope everyone sees. Okay. So so we have this cause, this cause, and then really um, what is written? We can ask this. So this is, what, this is what I hope you're seeing is we're asking questions as we work. And this is why, this is why, you're not good at making observations right now. You're not good at asking questions, but that's where observations, question and answers come into play. So then I can ask the question here, what? What is 
written. Well, what is written? What's the content of being written? It's this. And so if you go back to your handout, content is an object. The content of what is written, okay? The righteous shall live by faith. And we've identified that as Habakkuk, okay? So we've just completed a, a, um, um, a intra-sentence analysis, and we're going to move to inter. But coming back here, look at this. Look at this. From faith, for faith, by faith. And look at, look at the connection here. Look at the connection. Notice that there is no reference to works. There is zero reference to works. That does not mean that when we live by faith, the, the, what faith produces, the result of faith is works. So, so Paul says that in, in um, Romans 6. He says that in Romans 8. Uh, James says that in James 2. Paul, uh, the author of Hebrews, which I believe is Paul, says that in Hebrews 11. So it doesn't deny that works is the pr product of faith, but it does deny that the works is part of the salvation, okay? Works is apart from the salvation, okay? And that's crystal clear. You have salvation in verse 16. You have righteousness of God in verse 17. You have righteous. If ever, if ever the, the, the Catholic, uh, we are infused with righteousness, we get in by faith, but then we also need the works to perfect us. We need the works to to finish the salvation process, if ever. It should be, the righteous shall live by faith and by works. So we don't have that here. So this is why it's so important that we also be considering what we should expect if other theologies are true. What should we expect if, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, so, uh, any comments or questions or that makes sense so far? Okay, good. All right, so, so then the, the intra-sentence is, is done. And again, we're going to go, now go to inter. So now in the inter, we're looking at, we're looking at again, the main action word. We could say verb. Okay, is revealed. Now I just gave it away. I gave it to you. It's, it's an action. So, so the righteousness of God is being revealed. Okay. So it's an, it, I'm giving it to you. Did anyone have something different? And did people have as the type of sentence, this is an action. This is an action sentence. When you tried to work through your groups on last week, did you have the type as action or did, what was your other options? Okay. I'm assuming that everyone probably had action. I'm assuming that's the case. So, so the type of sentence would be an action sentence. And again, it's action because we're looking at the main verb. And then these are just offering a comparison or a basis. And then the content of that basis in the Old Testament. Okay. So everyone's tracking with me so far. Is anyone stressed? Is this making sense? Did I lose anybody? I don't want to rush. Is anyone lost as to why we chose action? Now we're looking at relation. Now we're going to go to inter-sentence. Inter-sentence. Okay, so we, we have, we've identified the, the two. So the, 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 we have the state, number one, the action, number two. Now we're looking at this relationship here. Anyone look at the inter sentence and it come up? Well, let me first ask the question. What's the key word that identifies this relationship? Can someone give me the key word that's going to give us this relationship? Anyone want to try to, looking at the two sentences? What's the key word? Well, that's with, so, so um, Danny, that's within verse 17. But if you can imagine, I just want us to visualize this. Now we're looking at, imagine this being one, 
and this being two. And so my question is, how are these, how are these two related? Uh, and so my question is, what is, there is a keyword. There's a keyword that's going to give us this relationship. And what is that keyword? Four. Four. Let me highlight that. So when you're looking at inter-sentence relationships, we are primarily looking at conjunctions. So the four. Now, if we come back here now, to our inter-sentence relationship handout. So we're looking at sentence relationships, okay? And I'm, I'm, again, I'm cheating. I'm just, you know, I'm going down. When I come to here, four, and this is an idea, explanation. And that actually makes very good sense. That actually makes very good sense here, okay? So if we're going to identify, this here is the, uh, this here is the, the idea, this is the big idea, and then this here is the explanation. That actually makes incredible sense, right? So Paul's gonna say, I am in a state of confidence with the gospel, why? Because it is the power of God for salvation. Concerning who? Everyone who believes. Paul, I don't give a rip what you believe. I don't care. You need to give me a basis more than who you are, right? Because that's what the Jews would say. That's what many people would say. Ah, for, <laughs> for God has revealed his righteousness to us from faith, for faith, because it has been written, the righteous shall live by faith. And that comes back to answering this question as well as who believes and the salvation part as well. So these are all, it's all interconnected. And so really, I do think that, that this is really, in one sense, a key. Danny said it's a key. It's a key in, in the thinking of Paul because if you can imagine here, it's going from this idea, it's moving from this idea to, to this climax. It's moving towards a climax in one sense. Paul is explaining why he has so much confidence. And the, the ball that he's going to drop on a Jew, on a Gentile, whoever, is that God has promised this in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the the so to get down to the to the nitty gritty, the word of God is Paul's foundation. That's the word of God. Okay, so is everyone tracking with me here? Okay, it's a little confusing. I've done a lot of marking up, but is everyone tracking with me here? So if I'm going to do a sentence, if I'm going to make a structure here, okay, so I'm just going to give, I'm just going to now move from the structure to, to an outline, okay? So this is what I would write. Number one, I would have, um, now this is, this, is a, this is an exegetical outline we would move it to, we're going to move it in the future to theological and then the homiletical, okay? So um, we could talk about Paul's confidence in the gospel. Now, some people want to have full sentences and, and uh, um, full sentences, and that's fine. I have full sentences, sometimes I don't. It's really, I'm just giving you the, the topic. And I'm not really giving you a final form, okay? So I would say Paul's confidence in the gospel. And um, um, uh, what I would do, number A, so that's the main topic, number A. You can just, because now you're going to explain each one, you can say um, Paul 
is confident in gospel. B, because it contains God's power for our or for that's that's how medical I should not be putting that accidentally yet uh, for salvation C it is for everyone so you so do you see how this kind of this kind of mimics that structure in a sense not perfectly but there is a clear there's a clear structural connection there can everyone see that everyone can see that and then coming down here number two um we can say Paul's explanation or let's get let's just um Paul's let's just do Paul's basis. Let's just do that. Paul's basis. Or you could say explanation. Yeah, explanation. Because it sounds great, right? It sounds great, but I don't care. A lot of people tell me great things. I don't care if it sounds great. I want to know your proof, right? Henry's, Henry's an engineer. He has a business. Many people, I'm sure, go to Henry and say, invest in this project. And they say, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. It's like, oh, it's great. Pie in the sky. We're going to be Living on cloud nine, right? But Henry wants to say, is it feasible? Maybe even Danny, is it, is it real? What's your foundation? What's the basis? Can it happen? So Paul's basis for this explanation, number one. Number A, um, God's, uh, God reveals his righteousness By faith, or faith, B is written. God wrote it, or God spoke it. Let's do that. God spoke it and wrote it. <laughs> God spoke it and wrote it in OT. And then I would just point number three would be the quotation itself. Or you could, or you could just put C into B, and so really it's just God spoke it and wrote it. You could just do it like that, and that's probably better. I, that, I actually God spoke it and wrote it. I would actually prefer that. That that's better. So I'm going to leave it here. Okay. So not, several things I want you to see here. Okay. Number one, you don't always have to have three points. Some people say there always has to be three points. No. <laughs> Throw okay. that out. Bob this three points. Yes, no, throw it out. Your job Bob is not to have a symmetrical, beautiful, a symmetrical, beautiful uh, outline. Your job is to have an outline that follows the word of God. So that when I see your outline, I'm like, wow, that's what the word of God says. Okay, so number one, does not have to be symmetrical. Or, sorry, number one, does not have to be three points. Number two, it does not have to be symmetrical. Here we have three points. Here we have two points. That's completely fine and acceptable. We're, 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 we're postmodern in, in our architecture. <laughs> we are, we are, we are not, we are, we are non-traditionalists in our structure because at the end of the day, our structure should just follow the pattern of the word of God that is given to us. And it's fine, come what may, okay? Now, now we're gonna see later, this is this is an exegetical outline. So actually, to be honest with you, that is going to conclude, that's going to conclude our, we're going to be talking about exegetical outlines just in like two weeks. So that's going to conclude the whole first point. So if you can imagine, we've gone from the, the background study from prayer all the way now to an exegetical outline, okay? Once you have come to this point, um, Points two and three, interpretation and application. Uh, exp we say explain it, uh, uh, explain it, and then apply it. 
they should come very fast. It should come like a flurry because if you've done all this work, once you have the extragenital outline, once you're here, um, it should come very fast. The rest should come very fast because you, sh you should really be in a place, um, in a good place. And really in the New Testament and epistles, you're really just changing like this to our, <laughs> that's going from, <laughs> We go from exegetical to theological to, to application. So, how, or yeah, we can say homiletic here. So, we're just going from Paul to our. <laughs> our confidence in the gospel. Our basis. <laughs> or we could say, we could say, we could say our confidence, and then we could just say the basis. Forget our. Because it's not our facts. It's the facts. It's the truth. Okay? There's only one truth. All right? Um, so, I hope this makes sense. I hope that you see your beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, um, I know that this, you're, you're, on, you're maybe on a high right now. And then when you go to your passage, you're going to be like, oh. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, what, what I hope, I hope that everyone, um, uh, I hope that everyone, <laughs> I hope you're on a high right now. It's, you're going to be low later. <laughs> but the big takeaway here is that this, this whole process here, brothers and sisters, it takes work, okay? For me to say, no, it's going to be easy, that's a lie. There's very few, if any, person that is gifted in this. You can say, oh, Tim, you're just gifted. No, it took me a lot of practice. They say, uh, Albert Einstein says that genius is 1% uh, uh, inspiration, 99% perspiration. perspiration. I, uh, I'm not the first person to say this, but I want to say this. Genius is 1% talent, 99% effort, okay? Meaning to say that everyone can be good at this. Everyone can do this. Now, you might not have the most pithy or amazing homiletical uh, outline that's catchy, alliterated, and all this other stuff, da, 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 the, the bells and whistles. That is very not in, inconsequential. I'm telling you right now, I've seen it so many times. If you just focus on what the text says and your outlines are simple, but they're text-based, people will come up to you and say, wow, pastor, you did such, I'm referring to any one of you who preach or teach, they're gonna say, wow, that's so good, that's so amazing, and, and you should say, well, that's just what the Word of God says, or that's what the Holy Spirit revealed. Because at the end of the day, it's not, I think we overcomplicate our sermons. We overcomplicate our sermons. We're trying to find because that's what the seeker sensitives do. That's what the big uh, Rick Warren, and they have all these amazing and catchy, and Charles Stanley, he was great. Charles Stanley is great at these amazing outlines. And so we're stressed about that. But if we can just focus on these fundamentals, the rest will fall into place and people will, will be attracted to your sermons, not, not because it's you, but because you are literally putting before them the word of God. That's all you're doing. You're just laying it before them in a clear and, and explanatory, uh, exposit, exposition way, expositional way. Any questions or comments? It's already 842. So we've been here for one hour. Yeah. So Tim, Go ahead. We, actually we have here in, here in the Philippines, we are not really, or, or probably all our past pastors are not really, you know, into this kind of, of, of studies, maybe some, but not really all. Uh, usually, the the preaching and teachings are, you know, typically, typically, uh, I think it, generally, uh, pastors will do their study on Saturday and then preach on Sunday, which is not really, you know, not really a good habit for for uh, really uh, for the ministers of the word. And so, uh, the struggle is between how could we, how can we, uh, you know bridge the gap between the exegetical outline into the homiletical outline and the other struggle also is to really understand or really preach the, the the biblical text or what really god says 
ako, what really God intends us to learn from from the biblical account. That's yeah. really because you know you know um, we have been influenced for for for, for many you know centuries or decades. Uh, you know we are being influenced by some kind of I would say uh, kind of minimalist preacher Christians or you know kind of training that is not really in depth into the, the scripture. So this is really a good training. I mean, uh, this is really a blessing for for us, and not not all who are have the privilege for this. Yeah. And 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 I, I do yes I agree that it, it really takes practice for for us to to really immerse ourselves. This is a part of immersion of of God's word. This is not just you know uh, some people will say uh, just read your Bible and then preach. What 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 can what 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 do you learn or what what can you get from 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 there or or what do you think you can learn from it? You know that's that's a really kind of what do you think the message is or you know <laughs> this kind of that kind of mindset. It's it's yeah. very common. It's very common and, and yeah. So it's kind of no, so if that's really good what, what you're saying, Sonny. So so I think you're hitting the nail on the head. And to be honest with you, the same problem is in the U.S. So you have the same problem in the U.S. It's it's the same. Okay. So so we shouldn't be pointing fingers and um, you're identifying what you perceive, what you perceive as a weakness. And it's, it, it is true here. I've seen that as well, but I do want to say that it's also in the U S that's the same in the U S. So just for all of us to be thinking, cause everyone's here. Some of you are preaching every week. Maybe you're preaching once a month. Number one, I think that we need to move from, from topical to, to exposit, ex, uh, expository. We just, we have to make that commitment. We have to make that commitment, number one. Number two, instead of Saturdays, you need to plan out, allocate time beginning Monday. Monday, yes. <laughs> Monday through to Saturday. Because when you're not rushed, you can spend the time in the exegesis. If, you, if, you, if, if you're rushed at the last minute, you're immediately going to go to the homiletical. We just we have to make that commitment of let's say I'm going to spend an hour each day on my on my sermon. We just have to make that commitment: one hour a day on my sermon, or half an hour a day on my sermon. And then, of course, you'll spend more time on Saturday and maybe Sunday morning. The reality is that's what happens. But we have to we have to start earlier. Um, the third thing I want to say. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I guess I'm just giving you practical ways. I'm giving you practical ways that, um, that, uh, that you can start this process. The third thing I want to say is that many times p pastors really want to help people. And so they have an idea of how to help them. Okay. And so they have, that's why, that's why they choose topical because they really want to help people. And that's a good um, that's good to have. And so they say, oh, my members are struggling with this. I want to help them. Okay. That's good. We, I don't, I never want to take away from that. We as pastors want to help people. But what I want to submit is that the best way that we can help people is by just preaching the whole counsel of God, just preaching the word of God. If we have a strong view of strong confidence in the sovereignty of God, if we have a, a huge view of, of the work of this Holy Spirit through the Word, we don't have to try to coerce people. That doesn't mean we don't go practical. That doesn't mean that we we have a seminar on families. We have, we have a seminar on prayer. Like we had a we had a class on on prayer. So there's nothing wrong with doing topics, but we need to change our we need to change that to really focusing upon um, putting the word of God before the people. We have to be putting the word of God before the people. 
Uh, first, first Thessalonians two says it's the it's the word of God that is work within within you that transforms. Let, let me find that passage. I'm gonna I'm gonna close on this. I, I want you to see this. I really want you to see this, brothers and sisters. Let me um, let's go to um. I mean, just looking here, they're 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 proclaiming the gospel. They they shared the gospel with them. They proclaimed the gospel day and night. You see that highlighted. Um, they received the word of God as it not being the word of men, but the word of God. They became imitators. We also thank God constantly that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it really is the word of God, which is at work in you believers. <laughs> I want to tell you this right now. I have one of my close friends went to a church. He was actually grew up in the church. The church had a lot of issues. The pastor had infidelity. It was very sickly. Uh, they, they kicked, the pastor had to resign because of sin. They asked the pastor to come back and to save the church. And he had been there now for almost 30 years, okay? So this is the context. And he told me that the church was so dysfunctional. And he said, you know what, Tim, you know what my goal was? I didn't have a topic. I didn't have all these different things. I just committed to preaching the word every week, and I would preach the whole counsel of God. That's it. And I said to him, I said, did the, did the, church, the church change? And he said, yes, it changed every issue that we had. If I just, my job was just to preach the word and let the work, the word do the work. And I want to say this. Sometimes we want to be the Messiah. We think that we can change people. We want to coerce people into a certain decision, to doing a certain thing. We are not the Messiah. We are not Jesus Christ. We're not the Holy Spirit. We're only the, the preacher. And so I just really want to, coming back to this, I want to challenge you tonight. I think everyone's seen this. This is hard. This is not easy. But focusing on expository preaching, committing to studying earlier in the week, trusting in God. That When I say sovereignty, what I'm saying is that God is in control. That, that, that <laughs> he is the one in control. You, uh, we let him, we leave it to him. Israel had to give it to God when they were freed from, from Egypt. It had to be God to act. Uh, number four. It's the Holy Spirit that changes the hearts. And then number five, our job is just to put the word of God, to put the word of God, let's do this, to put the word of God, this is, let me do this, written and living. So, so the scripture and Jesus, the scripture and Jesus before the people, that's our job. That's our job. So um, I'm kind of getting a little preachy. I'm sorry for going on. But I just, I, 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 want, I want us to see that um, uh, this can be done by you. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. And when we get to this, there will be a massive revival in Region 8, in the Philippines, in the America, if we come back to this kind of preaching. We lift to you, Lord, our hearts for today. Lord, I know that you know what is inside our hearts and you're all asking for forgiveness for all the things that we have done that is not right in your sight. And Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, especially at these times. Lord, I also raise to you, um, Biko region, Lord, our brothers and sisters who are affected, Lord, Lord, I know, Lord, you're sovereign, you're in control, Lord. I know that, as Pastor Dean said, you can even help them, Lord, even supernaturally. Lord, I pray that you will help them, Lord, please. And Lord, I also pray that you continue, Lord, to guide each and every one of us as we continue, Lord, with our studies. Lord, help each heart, Lord, not to quit. 
because I know, dear Father, that this is very important, Lord, in our lives. Lord, I know that we have to also encourage others, Lord, to learn about your word, Lord. And I know, Lord, that it is true. It will make a great transformation, Lord, in our country. All this I ask you, pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.